greeting, greeting sense in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope I find you blessed this morning, this afternoon, this evening. It is an honor in the mighty name of Jesus to come in the presence of the Master. In Jesus' mighty name, to Lord, to God be the glory. I hope you are all happy. I hope you are all enjoying the beautiful day the Lord has given us. It is a blessing to come in the presence of the Master and continue to dine before Him. So you know what? What else can we do? What can we else can we do? Because you know what? We are like fish that cannot live. You know, without water. So it's the same as Christians. What else do you live upon? What else do you depend upon if it is not the word of God? We are what we are because of the word of God. Hallelujah. So that's why I'm always be there for you, you and me together, coming to make sure we are all in one place, intact, making things happen. So this morning, I greet you, I greet you, I greet you. You saints, you are looking so blessed. You are looking so blessed. You are looking so blessed. Tell somebody, church has just started. Hallelujah. Because the weather, some people are actually having a lane. So please tell them that church has just started. Wherever you could be watching from, but let me tell you, I was up already too early to make sure I'm ready to come here and deliver what the Lord has for us in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, I welcome you. I welcome you in the presence of the Master because this is the day the Lord has made. We have every reason to be rejoicing. We have every reason to be happy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, love yourself this morning and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I have every reason to rejoice. Yes, speak something. Speak to yourself. Love yourself. I'm telling you. If you don't have nobody around, just embrace yourself and just say, you know what? I love myself. I'm beautiful. I am awesome. Hallelujah. I'm cute. I'm smart enough. Hallelujah. Just speak to yourself. Yes, 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 yes. I am healthy. Just start by just saying that before we get to the word of God, I want you to just put yourself and say, I am healed. I can feel my healing this morning. I can feel something. You know, it's what you speak that makes what everything happen. So let us get right into the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. It's an honor. It's an honor really this morning because I feel really that the Holy Spirit is at work moving things around in our lives through the word, the word, the word of God. So we want to see how we are going to deep dive deeper again because every time we are diving deep into stuff, we are not even wasting much time because we know you are hungry, you are thirsty. Tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody. You know, sharing is so important. It's the best thing you can do on our platform. I know some people are very aged to think, can I share, can I want? Please, you've got nothing to lose because we have shared the things that we have got even nothing to do. But you can't feel bad when you share with somebody. We think you don't have to have people who like what you are sharing. But as long as it lies there, the longer I stay to them, I'm telling you that, you know what, the more they just say, let, let me just have a glance. You know, you understand. So that's what it is. There's power in reputation. When you repeat something, there's always power in it. So let us get quickly into the word of God. What I've done this morning, and uh, I was praying, I said, God, what it is that we can come together and share? What is that you want to dine and have this morning? It was looking, he said, you know one thing I want to say, because most of us today, we become here what we are. As I put my title today, power of words, power of words, power of words. So there's something I'm going to look into and hope ourselves because some of us, we are thinking our life is going this way or that way. You know what? Because people have said that or whatever. Or some, most of them, it's words that we even speak on our own, apart from other people who spoke and we're always speaking those things. So we are going to address because it's happening to the church of God. It's happening to the people of God. That's why we find ourselves at some point, things, they seem to be on one place. They're not moving. They're not going anywhere. The reason being because, you know what, we have spoken things and they become you know, reality. So let us quickly see into this and see how we can help each other. I'm telling you, some of you after this, after this podcast, you are going to see the power of God, the power of words changing the dimension of your life because words have power, words have life, words have death. 
So that's why we want to see why we are seeing the world we are today. There are so many who are saying, I don't want to know about you because of what I heard you saying. Because if they were words, 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 words. But we want to look from the creation point of view. Let us quickly go into the word of God. Let us go quickly into the word of God. I'm trying to just give you an intro into what we are going to be looking into and see. Okay, power of words. Everything that exists come about by words. I'm giving my introduction. It is a phenomenal truth. Everything that exists came out by words. In the most of the Bible pertaining, our, pertaining of, to the world, we look it in the book of Genesis. That's where we find, let's see how words were done to create the world we are. That's when we are going to see it from a man point of view. From God point of view, the world existed when God said in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number, we go to Genesis chapter number one, right? You look at this. Chapter number one, we've got verses if you can copy and paste and put that, verses number 3, verses number 7, verses number 10, and verse number 28. These are the verses we find in the beginning when God created the heaven and the earth. He spoke things. One thing, there was something that I love. He says in Genesis, we read that God spoke. That, that's one. He spoke all things and they came into being. That's in Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 3. And then verse number 7. God said it was good. Then he called. Then he decreed. Hallelujah. And then what we see again. And he said it is good. And number 4. He said he blessed. So that means God spoke things and blessed them and called them. He spoke. He said let there be. And it was, he spoke the word, and he called them, sun be there, moon be there, as he called, and they became into being, after a spoken word, spoken word. Today we are trying to make sure, as a church of God, as families, as individuals, that we have a creative tongue, we have got a creative tongue, that can create the world we want to be, or the world we don't want to be. Hallelujah. So I'm going to help a lot of people because we were trying to think somebody has cursed me. No, no, no. You can reverse that because you've got words to defend. Not in fighting, but in prayer and through the word of God. So we are going to touch a lot of things. It's going to be very, I'm not trying to be very, very fast today. I'm trying to make sure each one of us is ready to hear this. Let us see. Even for, you know what? Let us go and see. Even in the verbal activity of Almighty God, that literally decree our world in existence. He, when he said and he decreed, and when he decreed, he, that was a declaration. And what happened? We are now in the world he had put a decree upon. So it was established. It has never changed from since then. God spoke the world into an existence. It never changed. People have tried to try and improvise, do what we think is all good for human beings to try and change what we change, but we cannot change what he has done. The sun has always been there. The moon has always been there. Hallelujah. Water is always there. Trees are always, how much deforestation we can do, how much, you know, agriculture, we're cutting trees. You can see when he said there shall be trees, they should, they're still coming out. That's what he decreed because they still shoot out. They shall bud out in the name of Jesus because it was declared, it was a decree and it was instantly words, words, words. So we, I'm going, can you catch up with me as we go? As into my introduction, even more remarkable, the one whose words were so awesome also gave you, hallelujah, gave you and me to the same capacity that words we speak would be creative, dynamic, hallelujah, in the, in the world around us. Indeed, God declared, hallelujah, that human, 
humankind be made in his image according to his likeness and he can see that in three way by our will our words and our eternal future hallelujah Whew, that's quite profound god has created man with his own image because when he was doing the creation all things he he what he he spoke but when he come to man he did the creation that i'm creating man in my own image that because he was giving us the will number one oh please this is very profound i don't miss out please don't change the dial don't run away please from this he gave us the will because the will to do what we can do let us see and the will and our words hallelujah this is our three-way thing the will god cannot come and control you god doesn't control thing people he god has given what we call a free will that's why we find in the book of Genesis, when we find God saying to us, to mankind, you know what, I've given you dominion. He was rendering the power to mankind, to humans and say, now I can't control you. Hallelujah. So you have the will to choose to do right and the will to do wrong. So it's entirely up to you. I've given you the domain. I've given you dominion. That means you've got a domain to take care of. Hallelujah, power of words. We are still going somewhere. Please don't change the dial this morning because this is going to be a life-changing sermon that is going to change the perception of how we see, how we speak, and how we perceive things. Hallelujah. God help us this morning. Words, they've destroyed people. Words have destroyed marriages. Words have destroyed countries. Words have destroyed families. Words, words. We want to speak into this one because it's a very fundamental subject we cannot avoid. Words, words. Let us go quickly as we continue. The, free, the will and our words and our eternal future. So your future, hallelujah, is determined by the will. How will you choose to do things and the words you use to create your future. Ah, today I think I must have been teaching very good. I don't know whether it's teaching or it's preaching. You can categorize yourself there. But it seems like I'm preaching good. I'm feeling it even myself. Because I find something here that, you know one thing? Our future is molded by the will that we have to do what we do. The free will, which God is not manipulating me. Because if God was manipulating me, honestly, I wouldn't be doing the dumb stuff I've been doing. Because he'd be remoting, controlling me. God doesn't control people with remote controls. Hallelujah. God has given us what we call free will. And in the free will, then he has given us how the creative tongue to create things. That's why I said, you are in my image. So now we are. Hallelujah. Whew, this is beautiful. Now we are the little G-O-D that can create their own worlds around us. Then when we create that, that, that is our future. So now we find ourselves where we at at the moment this morning. That you can even look at your life and say, mm -mm, no wonder why I'm where I am. There are these things that I said. When I said this, I did not know they would have, that they've created me into this situation. They've created and, man, and created a world that is so nasty around me. How many times have we seen, whether in movies or in any other kind of court cases and stuff, even if been arrested by the police, and then they say to you, you know what, remain silent, otherwise every word you are saying is you are used against you in the cost of justice. Words, words 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 so sometimes so we are going to touch stuff because we want to create a very conducive a, a very conducive church environment or you know what a family environment uh what can i say a, a community that is con conducive because it has got words of encouragement not words of destruction let us see let us see let us see there's so much to actually look at this afternoon in the mighty name of jesus right first and foremost god gave us a tremendous capacity of will no matter how weak your will may be 
it is still a decisive it's still a decisive as god see as god see so what i'm trying to bring here i want us to understand the will that god has given us it doesn't matter how influential you are how weak you are how learned you are how uneducated you are but this free will was given to mankind so every decision each one of us operate in a capacity so in that same capacity well there lies the little decision you make in your low capacity in high capacity that's still the same as what god did in creation he spoke let there be sun it was there let there be the moon it was there so now we find ourselves in this particular time that is so important to understand that it doesn't matter you are not educated you are not as smart as everyone else but the will that you've been given upon you when it's only in the lord when you speak life to it it can still bring life from zero to a hero hallelujah you can only speak yourself into anything you want to be i know i'm helping somebody this morning who was feeling like you know what i don't think i can mount up to anything i'll go there later anyway i don't want to go quickly like i'm summing my message it's only an introduction it's only an introduction we are still on introduction all right the capacity whether you're weak so you are as good as what god has spoken god makes a decision it stands you make a decision it stands hallelujah God's good will towards us never falter. But given free will, hallelujah, and a way of their redemptive realm of the earth. People make casual, listen to this, people make casual, even rebellious choices, as well as off the cuff remarks, which brings us to the second thing. What is it? You and me have the power of words. When God speaks, it is so. Then the Bible says here, hallelujah, that no words that you and I speak is without significance. There we come now. We are not going deeper into stuff. That means now we are talking about that as God has spoken, things became when whatever is, is standing right now, and you and me, the things you said, they came to pass. So that means we've got the same power to stand and speak into our future or destroy our own or destroy our environment with the same words. So every word that comes out of your mouth has a significance. Please get me right today we are trying to make things happen because every word has power it has significance hallelujah Whew. this is beautiful hallelujah that's why you find in the book of please write it down the book of first corinthians 14 verse number 10 our words count big big time and they might be a good thing or bad depending on the words we choose mm. so now it's bringing us today into this subject to understand what is it that we are doing with our words what kind of a world have we created around as you are standing before God and in your own creation, in your own domain? What kind of words are you speaking towards your life, towards your fellow counterpart, towards your own life, towards your children, towards your marriage, towards your husband, towards your wife? towards anything your boss whatever even your own ministry the members of the church even church members what words do we against each other in the mighty in our own setting what words are we speaking ah this morning i'm just trying to bring this that the church of God, we need to know that we are representing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is more of creativeness. But in our creativeness, what kind of words are we using to create? Because we can't see the existence of what we see unless we speak. So when we open our mouth, what are we saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying, child of God? What are you saying? this morning have come with this message to try and address 
Now let us see. Let us see. From the book Proverbs with the main text. Proverbs chapter number 18 verse number 20. 21. It says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. So let us, let us sit there now, and I'll give you some references we go. Now this is where we find, because God in the beginning has helped us to understand that we have the power to create our own world. He demonstrates the blessings. He demonstrates his, his, his wonder works of his hands and of his words. And he is demonstrating. So he gave us as a demonstration of that when you are called as a child of God, you can still create things and do happen. I'm talking to the church of God today that we are standing with the power. Words have got power, power. Please, where we are today, we have got a problem of where we are today. Of course, because we are not speaking ourselves out of poverty. We are not speaking ourselves out of, you know what, of any depression. We are always actually watering death over upon our life because Proverbs here we find Solomon a man full of wisdom he comes in and say life and death lies in the power of the tongue hallelujah those who believe it shall eat the fruit so now we see the world we are the commotion we are fighting we are seeing within our communities we are seeing within our churches we are seeing again our families is it is only by the words when words we speak they created commotion. And now we are eating the remnants. We are eating the fruits. Children of God have come because every time when I'm given the word, it's just for somebody. It's for me. I'm not bringing it for anyone, but it's for me and you. We choose to take it or we choose to say, you know what, I don't like this kind of preaching. Thank God for that. Because words, they're trying to mold something. And the way you are feeling a bit edgy, that's where it needs to be addressed. Because right now, we are seeing the commotion around the world today. We are seeing families on fire. One thing he said to me, she said to me, they said to me, they did this to me. Hallelujah, children of God. We are coming into a time where right now, some of us, I'm talking to people who are living a life where you say, Pastor, will I ever come out of this? No, you can come out of that only when you start to supply your world with the positive words. Positive words that brings life into you, that brings life into your situation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! How many people are telling you, Ah, this disease is my disease? I've known it when it was diagnosed when I was still younger. You know, we call them our disease. You no, know, the longer we talk about them, then we are still fearing. We, you know, we feel our life being torn down every time you hear only a little bit of thing, then something tells you you're not okay. Your thing has started again. We have spoken ourselves into that. I, you know, it's my thing. Yeah, it's my thing. It's my thing. It's my thing. Yeah, it's my blood pressure. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm not denying that you've got blood pressure. But you know what? If you sing blood pressure every day, that means you are always raising the temperature of blood pressure. Hallelujah. The temperature will always rise up. You know, if you tell yourself that I'm not beautiful anyway, so what makes me? Exactly. You walk up and look in the glass, you can look like you are not. I'm the ugliest person in the world. So what on earth am I going to? It's only what you speak. Because if you start to speak that I am beautiful, I am what I am. I am beautiful and I'm connected. I am what fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. You start to see yourself like, mm, look at this skin. Looks like a baby skin. Hmm. Hmm. You know, you start to talk positive over yourself. Do you know one thing? So many diseases we find it has been proven scientifically hallelujah, whichever our body and our, you know what, how God has done the mechanism about humans, our body is determined by the mindset we wake up with. When you wake up right in a grumpy situation, when you are feeling a bit miserable, the body starts to create negative fluids again, chemicals that start to affect our day. That's why I say today I feel lousy. I feel this. I feel that. 
Yes, because we are feeding the words. We are feeding our feeling with words. Now, you, some of you, you speak audibly. Ah, this is, not, this is a bad day. Once you start to say this is a bad day, it will end up with just a bad day. Let me tell you, life is full of ups and downs. But let me tell you, child of God, this morning I've come to tell somebody, you need to change your words. It's either you want to die or you want to live. These are the only two. Solomon had not to put it in any other different ways. He made it nice and clear because when he was writing the, this proverb 18, he had a lot of things in his mind. We all know about what it is. If you read verse number 20 of that, he says that man's belly is determined by what he puts through his mouth. Okay? Now when you are full, Verse number 20, 21, he says, life and death lies in the power of the tongue because when your belly is full, you've got the energy to speak. When you speak, what do you do? And then what does he say again? Verse number 22, I'm not going to sit on number 20, 22, where he says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So that means you are in the setting of the words. You are in a union of words. You are sitting in the ministry of words. Hallelujah. You are in the situation which is there by words. You came out from a village where they said you will never mount up. Today, some of you, you are still trying to scratch your brains and say, God, help me to take out these negative words. Yes, words. But one thing I love this morning, I've come to tell you, my brother, come to tell you, my sister, because right now the Lord is saying, I'm about to change your tongue. You are going to say to yourself, I'm above, not beneath. I'm just at the head, not the tail. I'm blessed going out and I'm blessed coming in. My brands are filled. They are running in overflow because you can't say, you can't continue to meditate that they say you shall not be married and said, I, I heard it. I went to prophet so and so they told me the same thing i went to, no no i don't care what words were spoken because in the beginning god blessed in the beginning god called in the beginning god spoke so if you are spoken by god in the beginning it is going to happen to you because he's saying the book of john chapter number in the beginning was the word and the word was with god who has got the final say it can only be god but what words are you standing upon children of god we are in the season. I can't sit, sit still as a pastor when I can see my following, my people who come and stand with me, being in the same mud round and round. That's why sometimes we don't preach popular, you know, things that everyone just, it's good, let's all preach the word of God. But there's something that I cannot deny addressing as a man of God. Because you know what? We want to go to heaven happy. Hallelujah. I don't want you to die poor thinking, you know what? Because we are going to heaven. Because there's a perception which the world has always said. I, I, I hated that one because I heard it even when I was young. They said the church is only for the people who are poor. Because they only die to go to heaven. They don't care about... No, no, no. I refuse. My words is saying I'm going to leave and sit the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That means my words are going to create an atmosphere of favor. Please start to change what you speak. Hallelujah. Search, change what you speak, what you eat in the mighty name of Jesus. Because what you eat gives you the energy to speak what you don't want to speak on what you want to speak. And you become a victim of words. What words are you speaking out? Over your healthy are you speaking healing or it's pain that you sing every day? I'm coming here. Are you speaking healing? What words? Are you speaking singleness? Ah, well, I've gone past the age, Pastor. There was time I was still able to dress. When I dress, all the boys will look at me, but this time I've lost the style and the stamina. Please shut up because you are the only one who's speaking yourself into it. Hallelujah. I'm coming here today because I've seen this one being one of the most, you know, sometimes we say, oh my goodness, our generation of, no, we are no longer having other, you know, how many times can we continue to tell you generational, generational every day? No, 
Some of you have been gone past generational cases. They are no more there. But the only thing that it was not out of you is the words are still lingering. And what you are speaking, you are still taking negative stuff and you are still putting it together. Even if you wake up on a bad day, it doesn't tell you to tell you that you are still ugly. It doesn't tell you that you are broke. Even if you wake up without money in the account, it doesn't tell you that you are a poor person. You just say, God, I know today I don't have money. But one thing I understand, you are Jehovah. Jaira. You are about to perform miracles again. It's an opportunity for you to show up. Change how you actually grease yourself so that it is always positive. Hallelujah. I love it because that's why Paul Imagine Paul, why would he have said this in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse number 28 when he said all oh, things are working because he's a man who has been through some stuff like you and me, Paul has no, if, even you have not gone through what Paul went through, especially according to the gospel. He's a man who's been beaten, who's been betrayed, he's been through some stuff. But let me tell you this morning, I've come to talk to somebody that, let me tell you, when you see things going the other way around, just wake up in the morning. That's why it's good to know the word of the Lord and say, all things are working out. Yes, I know it's looking negative. Yes, it's looking negative and it sounds nasty. But I know that all things are working out for good for me. What the enemy was intending for evil. Don't continue to say witchcraft, witchcraft. You are like, you're talking like witchcraft, like they are gods. Why do we talk witchcraft 24 7? Why do we talk about all the other negative? Why can't we just say Jesus is Lord? Ah, hallelujah. You can't. Do you know what you feed is what you become? How can you just go and listen to some music that tells you about poverty? What did you do? How can you go and listen to messages that tell you about poverty? Hallelujah. You don't need to hear more about ah, poverty is one of those things that you, you can stay with. Please get off that stuff. Talk about go and join the rich people's list. Go and join up and read out about the people who are successful in the name of Jesus. Don't read about who have died poor. You die poor. You are feeding on justification of your ground. I'm talking to the church of God. I'm talking to the church of God because we, we are in this season where we are hearing negative things going up on even in the church. You know, we've seen, you know, the people telling our church is going to, is diminishing. We've seen our old Pope has gone to Iraq, the land where Abraham was born. He went, you know, the land where he said to move out, that's where the Pope is right now. Do you know why? Because what it is, it's like because it, something was spoken. Hallelujah. And after it being spoken, and you know what? And somebody spoke back and spoke life out of it. Yes, we are not diminishing. We are starting again. In the name of Jesus. We are starting again. Children of God, it's no time to chicken out because somebody said so. Hallelujah. You have stopped even doing what you wanted to do because people spoke the words and told you, ah, you are starting to do this business. You never go anywhere. It's too late. It's so saturated. It's fluctuated with people. Hallelujah. Words, they discouraged you and you never went back to school when they said, how old are you? You want to do some nursing or you want to do some what? You want to do some mail? And then you said, ah, I'm too old. Let me tell you, this is the time. Words, 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 words. It doesn't matter. I don't know how old God is. I don't care because if God is called on Abraham and Sarah and gave them an old because he spoke the word and changed the womb of an old woman into a teenager. So what do you tell me about your age? What do you tell me about your age? And tell me words. Are you standing? Whose report do you believe? Where do you stand, child of God? This morning, I've come here to tell my people. Let me tell you just that this, I don't care what was declared. You have got a creative words. You've got created to change the dynamics of your family, the dynamics of environment, even at your workplace. They are telling you you won't last long. And say, you, know, you say you won't last long, you are giving me a certificate to last longer here now because I am a child of God. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be pushed. Let me tell you, if the devil say you are a sick person, just say, you know what? I've been healed. Hallelujah. If he tells you you're ugly, say, I am beautiful. In the mighty name, I've learned to resist words with words. So don't go back and cry. I heard them saying about me. That's why I'm under the duvet. I'm, you know, 25 degrees, you are under the duvet. Because they said something. Child of God, that's the time to go and put some present worship. 
It's time to put some praise in worship. Just put some praise in worship. Start praise the Lord. And give him praise for who he is. Because words, 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 words. We have seen words. Let's see. Otherwise, because I need to give you more scriptures to understand. Please write them down for yourself. I allow people who are smart who can have diaries, some notebooks around. Please be a smart somebody because one day you won't see me. Hallelujah. But you know you can go some reference. That man, that man, that beautiful pastor. Because I'm beautiful anyway. I'm just that beautiful pastor. Ah, because anyone who calls me ugly, ah, let me tell you, I'm one of the beautiful pastors in planet Earth anyway. So no one can beat me. Let us go and see in Proverbs chapter number 16. Because words, what do we find? Proverbs, you know, I love Solomon because he said, Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, healing to the bones. <laughs> it gets beautiful. It says here, any pleasant words. How many times do you feel the real tinkles of your body when somebody say, You are cute, you are beautiful, you are so handsome. You feel the tinkles over your body. But let me tell you. So how many people have we destroyed by telling them what they are not? And what have we done? Some have committed suicide. What? Every time. You are this. We've heard in this country there's so many awareness. Bullying. That we hear. Children when they are from school. That's why the spirit of religion starts to come in. Where they are cutting themselves. Because somebody told them, you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that. But he says, child of God, I've got people who are here on this platform today. You are starting to bring the sweet words. You are starting to turn the sweet words into a honeycomb. Hey, mkokowe uchi. Hallelujah. Where people are going to even say, mm, yeah, yummy, yummy. Are your words yummy? Or they are bitter? says they are healing so some people who are sick right now they are sick of the words we said oh kabo shatire lord help me to help some people tonight this afternoon this morning i said whatever we see the sicknesses around ourselves are the result of the word we spoken those who are happy are the result of the word we spoke so what is coming out says they are like sweet sweet as honeycomb brings healing to the bones uh, some of you are tired of somebody who spoke and said I am tired of this I am sick how many times we said I'm sick and tired of this and then you take a rocky chair and say let's boys chair say I'm not gonna get out of this because they said so, this too much pastor it's too much pastor it's too much how many times you said the pastor it's too much and then you left everything because he said it's too much I'm coming to the church of God ministries Pastors, leaders, elders said I can't bear the words the people are speaking in the congregants. But we are here today, children of God. We are right now. We are responsible of our words. We are responsible of what we speak. Let me tell you, you don't want to be the victim. On what I'm telling you, you don't want to be the victim or the one who victimizes. Hallelujah, don't be the candidate of words who are going to speak destruction. Don't be today. If it's the day to say, Lord, I change what I speak. I change how I see things. Let me tell you, some of us, we speak venomous stuff. Venomous, poisonous stuff. You just think of taking a rope and hang yourself. But today, I've come only to say it's never too late to look at things in a different way. Create a very honeycomb situation. Where honey flows in the family, where honey flows at your workplace. You can't be the troublemaker at work and say when you are in the shift, people there are afraid of seeing you coming on the shift. Who am I partnered with today? They look at the road and say, good Lord heavens, I have to bring in my earphones that I can go around with headphones around because I don't want to hear her words or his words. He speak nasty. Hallelujah. Children of God, what are we creating in our only workplaces, even in our own marriages? Are we speaking stuff that brings honeycomb or we are bringing poison? Children of God, in our church, there are people who are very good in steering. 
one minute you give them a microphone i'm telling you they will throw some poison and the whole church is nodding and nodding and say lord lord if this day can be over you are known for that hallelujah they, they you know what they see you they change direction how many people say ah they ignored me no they know you you don't speak right your words are dangerous that's why they are ignoring you and no one calls me they know because at the end of the phone it doesn't end well please words are not right words when they are not directed and when they are not prayed for if they are not well calculated there is as good as murder words 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 if they are not well calculated you are seeing wars that we see around the world. It's because of that. Let us continue. Let us continue. You know, words. Let's see what it is about words. Words have got power. Let's see First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20 says, For the kingdom of God does not consist of in words, but in power. That means when you speak words, then power is there. Power is not there when you don't speak. So you need to activate when you speak the throwing and power exerts straight away. It's automatic. So that's why we see the result. So the kingdom of God. So I'm talking to people who are going to change what you were speaking over your own self. Please, I want to see women and men of God who are saying, my ministry is going to grow. I don't care. I'm seeing my marriage being restored. I'm seeing my children coming back. Don't say ah, this stupid thing. This, you know, this word that we speak, this stupid stuff, this stupid stuff, this, this, that, this dumb stuff. Poor me. You can't say poor me. Who told you you are poor? Poor me. I've heard these words. Poor so please don't say it to me because only I'll speak back. I'll say to go back to the sender. I'll say, I'll tell you, back to the sender. Especially if I hear you audibly, you can speak where I'm not hearing you. But if I can hear you in front of me, poor Pastor John, I said back to the sender. Because I know who I am. And I know whose I am. And I know that God is on my side. If the Lord has said so, who can? My children shall prosper. My marriage shall last. Hallelujah, I shall be married. I know I'm going to not to die alone. In the I don't care how long it has taken. But I'm going to speak positive. I'll dress like I want to get married. I'll dress like I want to marry. Hallelujah. I'll work like I don't want to get poor. I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to go to work. I'll go to school to make sure I'll feel free my dreams fighting against words fighting against words fighting against words Jesus is Lord tonight let us see words let's see ah this is why I love Paul first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 it says my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of the wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of the power. <laughs> That's why here, I've come here. We are coming to tie, turn the tides around. Children of God, we have got the power to turn the tides around. Today, we are turning the tides around with our own words. I want each one of us to stand their ground in the house and go and take off every sticker that looks so sympathetic and everything and say, you, you don't belong here. I need something that tells you, you are the herd, not the tail. No, take every everything that you've given and put on your wall that reminds you of your situation. It's the time you speak life. God has given you. He demonstrated in the beginning. That's why Paul said I'm not bringing this message to you. Neither me. I'm not preaching you to persuade. This is not a persuasion. Because when you persuade people, you are trying to just gain some followings and some people. No, I'm talking here for the demonstration. Because I've seen the demonstration. Healing is coming to somebody tonight. Healing is coming to somebody this afternoon. Why? I'm speaking healing, the word of God. And it's coming to be demonstrated in your house. Restoration is coming into your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because it's a demonstration of what I speak and what I preach. My message are not persuasive today. I'm coming to you and say, let's turn the tides around. Yes, it does and look right but it's gonna be all right in the mighty name of jesus yes 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 suffering may come and come to me overnight but the joy of the lord is my strength it will come in the morning joy comes in the morning my morning is coming find something some, some words of encouragement and you find yourself out of this children of god i wouldn't preach in other manner in such a time as this like this i just feel it i just feel it i like Ah, oh, you see, because words, 
Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 37 says, For by words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. <laughs> oh, fool, loba shakaya busika. By words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Children of God, children of God, it's high time now we change the tides. They are just on your tongue. I love what James says, a tongue is a little member of the body, but it's very dangerous. It's like a matchstick in the book of James. He said the tongue is a little member of the body. Honestly, that's the only little member, but guess what? Chaos. He is quite chaotic. Ah! Have you ever noticed? I don't want it to be really quite... Uh, the, 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 there's a situation of some people who try to magnify themselves to try and bring their stature up by their characteristics. Because the tongue is always inside. It's not like the nose or the eyes, it's inside. So this one needs to actually make sure it's known and identified. Right? I found it in people where they've got their own weaknesses and what they find where they can try and make themselves known for who they think they are and use the tongue. And that's why James said, put it nice and clear, said, be careful. It's the smallest member of the body. But let me tell you, houses are on fire. Workplaces are on fire. Parliaments are on fire. When you hear them, whoa, in the comments, it's the tongues. When they are put together, they become whoa. Let alone when you are indoor, probably husband and wife. It becomes Kirimanjaro. It becomes Mike Tyson. It becomes anything at your workplace. Confusion. Your tongue is busy grassing others. People who are good at work only grassing. They, they enjoy grassing. You're always called to offices because if they are on the shift, you know grassing. I, 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 you learned this word here in the UK, grassing. Checker. Grassing. Somebody enjoy you being cold because your tongue can't keep quiet. Children of God have come here today. You shall be condemned. There's condemnation in the words we speak. In the word we speak. With your words. You are not. That's why, you know, we've got Romans chapter number 6. What you sow, you shall reap. The words you speak. If you speak love, you shall reap love. If you speak hurt, you'll continue to have hatred. Words. The tongue, the words. Let's just go quickly as we are about to round up our message today. We find here, we find here, let's see, First Corinthians chapter 2, yes, verse 18, First Corinthians 2, 18, it says, which, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but those taught by the Spirit. Combining spirit thoughts with spiritual words. <laughs> Let me tell you, children of God, ah, your breakthrough, your breakthrough is only when you start to speak the word of God. The truth, the word of God, hallelujah, in wisdom, hallelujah, added by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. When spiritual words, spiritual words, you can only find in the word of God. When you do that, our breakthrough comes in and say, I am healed. Hallelujah. I've been delivered. The blood of Jesus speaks over my children. The blood of Jesus speaks over my life. Wherever I go, he leads the way. My He leads the way. I'm not all about sick. This morning, I'm talking to people. When you put spiritual words and wisdom and the word of God, what you are finding yourself is on the other side. Demons will flee away because the power will be demonstrated in your life. Children of God, we can't go on like this where the enemy is tormenting our children. He's tormenting our marriage. He's tormenting our families. We are refusing. I'm coming to you right now. Let's change how we speak. Let's change how we talk, how we see things, how we perceive. Let's bring something positive among ourselves in the name of Jesus. Yes, things went good yesterday, but today we are coming up in the name of Jesus and make things happen 
In Jesus' mighty name, we are taking the word of God. We are taking the wisdom of God and the spiritual, and we are bringing together. We are seeing a turnaround. We are going to see a turnaround in our lives. We are going to see healing. We are going to see reconciliation. We are going to see prosperity. We are going to see growth. Hallelujah this morning. Words are honeycomb. They are healing to the bones. Your disease are caused by depression because somebody said something. Anxiety because people said something is not going to be all right. Let me tell you. I know we listen to news too much. <coughs> what the enemy has done in this season, he has made sure he has 24 news outlets. He has 24 hour news outlets. This is where something I want you to grasp. Why? Because if you have got a controlling spirit, a controlling spirit, you try by all means to bring in more information for people to hear you and then follow you and they become subject to what you do. That's why the world today, you look at all oh, this COVID thing, why people are so anxious, why people are in depression, because the day when COVID was taken as the pandemic, right, it became the subject, right? So if you don't understand the word of God, then what do you do? How many have died? Because honestly, in all honest, words are dangerous. Now, mental cases for those who work in mental institutions are um, three times higher than any other normal circumstances in the history of mankind. Why? Because every word was coming, whether from a prime minister, from a president, from a, from a gist, gist, what we call those geologists and whatever. It has actually entered in other people, and when it landed, how it was accepted and perceived, has turned their mental understanding upside down. They start cutting themselves, suicidal, and then mental breakdown. Those who can't get mental breakdown, depression, anxiety. So what's going to be my tomorrow? What's going to be like this? What's going to be like that? But let me tell you. I can only say in the world, I go back and say, yes, you are telling me the economy is not going to grow. Ah, mine is not determined by the, the chancellor. No, 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 no. I refuse. Mine is not by the fellow. Ah, I refuse. We refuse, refuse to be controlled to think the pharaoh and the whatever, how the chancellors do the logistics and stuff. Let me tell you. I go back to the word of the Lord. It says, Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 19, he says, My God shall supply my needs according. I know you are not at work. I know you seem. My God shall supply according. My God shall supply. My God shall supply. You know, Philippians chapter number 4, verse 19. I don't think I've got the power to go ahead. Go back to Philippians chapter 4, verse number 18. I can do all things through Christ with my strength. In the name of Jesus. Children of God, once we start to do that, I don't know how my future is going to be. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. That's, that's something against. That's your antidote. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. That's your antidote. Please, and say, you don't know your future. Uh uh. My future lies on Jeremiah 29 11. For I, know, for I know the plans I have for you, my daughter. For I know the plans I have you, my son, my children. I know God has the plans for you. It's not in the government institutes. Hallelujah. Thank God for their lives. Because we are part and parcel. But they can't determine my future. They can't determine my future. Once you are determined by the system, you always be run by the system. I'm taking this is the truth. That's why Paul said, I'm not preaching a persuasive message, but the message of power and the demonstration. Um, because I know the demonstration of the power of God. I've been working under the demonstration, not any persuasive. I don't bring persuasive message. That's why whether you like it or don't like it, like I care, I don't even care because I'm not a persuasive pastor. 
I'm not trying to persuade anybody, but I'm telling you that the truth of the matter, that you can change your situation. You can change the tides. Hallelujah. I'm tr trying to persuade you. I'll try, try. No, there's no trial. He's true. His word is tried and tested. Hallelujah. His path he given you, he's already road tested. When he said, I lead, it's a road tested God. Hallelujah. You are given focus with politicians. They can only give you so much. Their words can only end up in another election fraud or anything. But when you stand upon the word that comes from God, they'll come to pass. Politicians, they shift. They got another police. Tomorrow they change on another police. How many times you vote one politician to another and then you find yourself well at the end of the day, they are all the same. But let me tell you this morning, I've come to here. Let us create the heaven mindset coming from the above and become a creative creature of God, a human and a child of God. I'm coming to men and women of God. Yes, things are not fine. I'm not minimizing what you're going through, but I've come to give you to maximize what you can be. I've come to maximize what you can be. I come, I've done, I didn't minimize your stuff, but I've come to maximize what God has for you. Please, if you are there, can you shout hallelujah, pastor? I just shout hallelujah, pastor. You are speaking to me. I'm starting to change that I am going to be this. What the enemy said, the opposite. Do you know, I've always said, I remember the time when I was in pain. And I said, God, what is the opposite of pain? I knew it was healing and happiness. And I found myself under my cancer situation. Stage four cancer done and dusted. But I saw myself as an energetic man. Do you know, that's why in the, in the Bible, you see, as I'm trying to make this, you know, close to this, close this one. Let me tell you, all right. You know, this is one thing. Let us meet because I don't want you to miss the scriptures. Please write them so quickly. You know, that's one thing. That's one thing. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterance of God. Now you see. You see. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterance of God. Whoever serves is to do as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies. So that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So that means, children of God, he said when you are speaking, I can see women of God who are speaking their healing right now. You are start speaking into your marriage right now. He said when you are speaking, speak like God, how he created. That means now you understand that when you're speaking negative over yourself, you are really killing yourself. It's self-suicidal. I've come to you. Turn it around today. Turn it around, child of God. I said, turn it around today. Please, turn it around. Speak like you're speaking from the utterance of God. Oh, I'm this. Hey, I'm that. Come on, have a break. You are not. Refuse it. Refuse it. Ecclesiastic chapter 8 verse 4 says, Since the word of the king is authoritative, who will say to him, what are you doing? Don't, don't go and confront you, your situation by trying to think like I'm trying to confront you. What are you trying to do? No, speak with authority. Words are authoritative as a king. That's why the Lord said, let there be son. He didn't say, son, are you going to come when I tell you to come? No, he spoke in authority and the son was there. So your healing speaks, say, you know what, you pain, go now. You go now, you leave now. You confusion, go now. You mental breakdown, go now. You depression, go now. You are not part of my life because I've been created to be happy. I've been created to have my full life in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to live in mediocre. I'm not going to live in singleness. You go now. You speak authoritatively. Who would argue when you know you're speaking authoritative words? To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mm. yes, Matthew 10, 20, because as I close of, because of my time, it says Matthew 10, 20, for it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Because we know who we are in Christ. If you know who are you are in Christ, that means you know who's backing you. Like I said, who's got your back? Because when you speak from the authority of the him who had created the heaven and the earth, you can speak, he told us, do this. 
That's why he gave Adam the power to actually call the animals their names. To this day, no one has changed the names of the animals. Because even scientists could not come and change. What Adam called is still to hear. So that means you and me, we are about to do it. So I want you to understand this morning. This morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes. This, the last scripture we find it from Jeremiah 5.14. Jeremiah 5.14. Therefore thou says the Lord, the God of hosts, because you have spoken this word, behold, I am making my words in your mouth fire. And this, and this people would, and it will consume them. <laughs> what a way to close. What a way to close. Now we find that now the Lord is saying, Therefore I said, you know, thou says the Lord, God of hosts, Jehovah world, hallelujah, the Lord God of hosts, because you have spoken, that means you and me has given us the dominion and the place and the platform to speak under his authority, under his hospice, and we are now speaking. He said, Saka, you know one thing that I want, I want to make sure that you understand, you see now, now, Elijah, this Jeremiah being told that you spoke. The Lord is happy that you spoke. Then he said, now, I'm making this word through your mouth fire. So if you are keeping silent, how much are you letting yourself down? If you are just crying, waking up my life, my life, my situation, my what, my what. Now they said, Jeremiah spoke something positive. The Lord said, yes, I'm making it in your mouth like fire. I'm making like fire. Oh, the God of Elijah who answers by fire. Fire is coming to your tongue. You shall speak fire to your situation. Everything shall be burned. Whatever the Lord has not planted in your life, he's going to take it away. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said, and these people would. So that means I speak fire. And you, you're like wood. You burn. So that means you speak fire. The Lord has given me now what I speak is fire. That means anything that is not of God is being burnt. This morning, this afternoon. Ah, I said this morning, it is your day. The Lord is telling me that this is your hour. The Lord is saying this is your hour in the mighty name of Jesus. He said today is anointing you, your tongue with fire. Are you, are you ready to receive the fire on your tongue to change what you speak? To change what you speak in the name of Jesus. To change what you say. Hallelujah. Anything shall be like fire when you speak. Hallelujah. Shall be like wood. Hallelujah. You shall burn every situation. You shall change the whole atmosphere. Because the fire is the only thing that can test it. If anything can stand the time and the pressure of fire. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever the enemy intends for evil. He's saying, I'm going to speak, going to speak fire. I said, you stand your ground today. Stand your ground, child of God. Your words change how you speak. Speak positive. Hallelujah. Speak power. Yes, don't be one who causes trouble. If you are a man of peace, go and find peace. Because what that's what God said. Blessed are those are peacemakers. If you go to the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter number 5, read all the Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why? Because you're not the one who causes the confusion, whether in the family, whether in whatever. Because your mouth is known for speaking good things. Known only for just making people be at peace. So this morning, this afternoon, I thank God for your life today. I'm going to pray for you right now before we take our communion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank God for every individual at the sound of my voice. Right now, today, we have come, Lord, to learn how to speak the word. How we speak, how we utter. You've given us all the power to speak our world into an existence. Father, our mediocre, our downfall has been determined by what we speak. Hallelujah. But today, our marriage are being restored. Our children are coming back. Father, Lord, our churches are going to grow. Ah, We are going to grow. We shall reach out. I shall be a preacher. I shall be an evangelist. Nothing is going to stop me. It's not my nature. It's in this power of the Holy Spirit around in my life. Lord, fill them today. Fill them today. Fill them today with the confidence. Those who have lost their self-esteem, 
They tell I can't be married. I'm too old. I'm too this. I can't go to school because I'm too old. I've gone past time right now. And they die poor are crying. Today I rebuke. They are starting to speak positive. They shall find avenues today in the mighty name of Jesus. No words of witches shall continue to stand. They are going to speak back. They are going to renounce. They are going to denounce every wording in the name of Jesus. They told you, you shall be mounting to know nothing. But right now, you are mounting to something. From nothing to something. Hallelujah. From zero to a hero. Today I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Your words are like honeycomb. Your words are sweet. Your words are power. Your words are everything you desire. No weapons that you need right now. It's on your tongue. Use your tongue to speak life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say goodbye to negative. Say goodbye to negative stuff. Say goodbye to bad news. Hallelujah. Listen to the good music. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that this morning, this afternoon, Lord, as they receive this message, Father God, you've touched another couple. You've touched so many families, even in their workplaces. In the area where they find this word, Lord, valuable to them and significant, so be it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Healing has come to somebody. Yeah, he's coming to somebody because you're starting to feel it. You're starting to feel your body because you're starting to think positive. Now your body is starting to do. It's producing the good stuff. The good stuff, good stuff because, you, you know, you've been feeding so bad stuff. So now I can feel it. I can see you. I can see you. Something is going on. So God bless you. God bless you. Let us take our Holy Communion. Let us take our Holy Communion. We want to thank God as we take our Holy Communion this afternoon. We want to thank God as you hold your bread. We are going to say something right here in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say this in the mighty name of Jesus? Can you say this? Because it is so important, children of God, to know that God is at work. God is about to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. It is the time as we take this communion. It's going to actually to be like fire on your tongue. And then what you speak shall be life. Hallelujah. I, I want you to convert this eating, this, this bread, like the fire coming on your tongue. That means what you're going to speak, it's not negative. Yes, things went good, but this is going to change. Today we are taking for the tongue. Please let us take him for what, our words. Please, you're taking not for anything. This you're taking for the words. Words, 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 the word we speak. So we want to make sure right now, Father, I think as we're going to partake today, that Lord, this as it melts and it gets into us, changes everything, the dynamics of our tongue and words, what we speak, because we want to speak our world into an existence. You do not speak death, Lord, but we created our own death sentence. But today I thank you for reversing this through your power. As you say in the book of Jeremiah 4, verse number Lord, I know you've changed it right now in the book of Jeremiah 5. I thank you, verse 14. You said, it's not be like fire on your tongue, and there shall be wood that is going to burn. Father, right now we do it in Jesus' name. Can you say this after me? Thank you, Father, thank you, Father for the gift of your son. For the gift of your By son. the stripe that fell on his back, on his back my, body my body is healed. From the crown of my head the of my to the head. very sole of my feet. My of my every, feet. Cell, every cell, every organ, every Every function, Every function of my body, of my body is, healed is healed and restored and, restored and, renewed, and renewed in Jesus' name. In Jesus I, believe I believe and I receive. And I receive. Let us all eat the bread. As you are holding this cup, it's going to wipe away the memories of words. Because the blood of Jesus washes away our sins, our iniquities. So I want you, as you are going to take this, it's going to actually wipe away the memories of the words that were spoken over your life. So forgiveness is coming. Peace is coming. Positiveness. You shall not have no negative things coming and overrule you. So we are going to drink this together. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus thank you for the precious blood. You are sin free. Disease free. Poverty free. Poverty free. Life is in your blood. Is in your, blood. Your, blood your blood has moved has every, every, every sin from my life. From my life. Through, your blood, Through your blood, I'm forgiven, I am forgiven. of all my sins, all my sins. Past, past, present, present and, future. and future. In Jesus' name, yes. I, <clears throat> I'm complete, I am complete righteous. righteous. Today, Today, I celebrate, I celebrate and, partake and partake of the inheritance. Of the inheritance 
of righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Let us all drink together. Father, I just want to say thank you for this morning, this afternoon. Lord, I thank you for the, all the members who have been on this service today. Lord, I thank you that they devoted to come and learn more of you because we cannot live without the word. And this same word is what has become what we are today. Lord, as we convey this message into practicality, that today we are starting to speak positive. We are starting to speak life. Yes, there have been so many challenges in life. There are some people who are saying, I can't get over this, Pastor. I can't stop doing this. But today I know in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you are turning their tongues into a creative tongue. Lord, into a blessing tongue. No more curses coming over their tongues. This spirit of cursing, we are no longer going to curse, but we are going to bless. We are going to reverse, Lord Almighty God, every curse through our mouth, through our lips. Today we are creating a very conducive environment in our church setting, in our homes, in our workplaces. Lord, let us be the salt of the world. What we speak will season some situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, take away every venomous words. There are some words that are still sitting in our brains. We can't let go. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has come to wash away. Thank you for the washing away, Lord. I thank you for healing my brothers and sisters today from every word. Because today, a new word is coming to take over. And they shall be created from this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, children of God. I want to give thanks for your life, for being in this podcast. I want to bless you. know that you've been blessed to have me and to have you in our midst. So God bless you for everything. I want to thank God as we are going to actually share the grace this, mo this morning, this afternoon. Please take this word so seriously. It's not a persuasive word. It's a word that transforms what we speak. It brings life to everything. God bless you, children of God. We love you so much. From us here to you, God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's share. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit live and abide with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed evening. Have a blessed morning. I'm telling you, create your day with positivity. In Jesus' name, healing is yours. Breakthrough is yours. Shalom, shalom.